channel, the ABC, was first introduced by Blackwell, Brayman, and Thomasian as a channel with unknown statistics that may change over time. This is the case, for example, when there is a jammer who attempts to disrupt communication and maximize the probability of error, and it is also relevant for modern networks such as biometric secrecy system attacked by a hacker. Now, Blackwell, Brayman, and Thomasian determined the random code capacity of the ABC, that is the capacity achieved by stochastic encoder, stochastic decoder coding schemes with common randomness or shared randomness. And they also showed by example that the random code capacity may not necessarily be achievable using deterministic code. And then Alswitch showed that the capacity or deterministic code capacity has this dichotomy property. Dichotomy property means that either the capacity is zero or else it equals the random code capacity. There are two extreme possibilities. Then Erickson and Chizar and Ariane established a computable condition to check whether the capacity is zero or not. They show that the capacity is zero if and only if the ABC is symmetrizable and we will get uh, later to, soon we will get to the uh, symmetrizability property. Okay, uh, now a network can also be attacked by a jammer, of course. So there's a line of papers on arbitrarily varying networks, including the arbitrarily varying multiple access channel, broadcast channel, and wireless channel. This is a very partial list of papers. Uh, now here we consider the case when there is side information. And the basic models with side information are those of uh, Shannon with causal side information, and the Gelsman-Pinsker channel with non-causal side information, uh, the broadcast channel, degraded broadcast channel with causal and non-causal side information was considered by Steinberg and then Steinberg and Shamai. In these models, they consider what we call a channel with random parameters or a random state. That means that the state sequence is memoryless and has a known state distribution. Now, for the Avitali variant channel, where the state sequence has an unknown arbitrary dis joint distribution, then the single use ABC with causal side information was considered in the book by Chizer and Kerner, and the ABC with non causal side information was uh, addressed by Alswitz. Then the orbitally varying degraded broadcast channel, the, uh, the non causal case, and non causal side information in the encoder and the stronger decoder was considered. Uh, by Weinstock and Steinberg, and in 2017 we considered the case of causal side information. There we assume that the broadcast channel is degraded, and now we are going to talk about the more general case of a general broadcast channel with degraded message set. So here are our main contributions. We consider the arbitrarily varying general broadcast channel with degraded message set when there is causal side information as the encoder. We give inner and outer bounds on the capacity region. And we also give conditions and show that there are interesting cases when the bounds, when the bounds coincide. So we have uh, the capacity region uh, under this condition. Now we also determine the capacity region of the random parameter broadcast channel for this scenario of degraded message sets and causal side information in the encoder. And this generalizes the previous result by Steinberg where he assumed that the broadcast channel is degraded. So here we remove this assumption. So our proof technique for the Abital Levant broadcast channel with causal side information actually differs from the methods by Chizar and Kerner for the ABC with causal side information. And they're actually based on Alswitz robustification technique which he used for the ABC with the non-causal side information. Now, with causal side information, the robustification technique cannot be applied as is, and we have to modify it such that it would be applicable with causal side information. 
And this also generalizes our previous uh, results and uh, analysis. Uh, so now we begin with the definition. Here the channel is specified by this state-dependent broadcast channel, W of Y1, Y2, given X and S, <coughs> with the state sequence SN as an unknown joint distribution, not necessarily a product distribution. It could even give probability one to a certain state sequence. So this includes the case of an unknown deterministic state sequence. We denote the channel by B in telegraphic form. Now for the analysis, we also consider the compound broadcast channel, uh, not the classical definition, but based on Alfred's definition, where the state sequence has a, um, has a memoryless state distribution that belongs to the set Q, and we denote the channel by BQ. Okay, so we are going to use the results for the compound broadcast channel to analyze the arbitrarily variant broadcast channel. And we also note that the case of a broadcast channel with random parameter where there is a me known memoryless state distribution is a special case of the compound broadcast channel where, the, uh, where this set has a single state distribution in it. So the state distribution Q of S is known. Okay. okay, so here we have shown definitions for the deterministic codes and random codes. We consider both deterministic code capacitor region and random code capacitor region. Now with causal sign information. Sorry, this random parameter, you can just uh, absorb that random parameter in the channel uh, partition probability itself, right? I'm not sure as long as it's SS, you see this random parameter. So there are some parameters that are random, but you can just think of it as uh, that randomness as part of the quality. Yes, the, you, you do know the marginal from the input to the output, since you know the state distribution, if that's what you mean, but there's still uh, there's still meaning to the state bec because of the side information that you encode, because the input depends on the state of the. Okay, here uh, is what I'm getting at: that the encoder has the sequence of past and present states S1 to SI. So the encoder has this at each time i, the encoder uses this mapping SI that depends on. M0 is the common message, M1 is the private message, and S1 to SI is the sequence of past and present states. So it's MI. MI rather than M1. Uh, where? M, why M1? Uh, SI is M0, MI. M1, no. M0 is the, the common message, and M1 is the private message. Oh, okay. That's why. I is index for time. Yes, I is okay, okay. time. Okay. Um, questions are very welcome. Um, okay, so decoder one estimates both the common and private message, and decoder two only estimates the private message. Okay. Uh, so the common. Um, yeah, so now we look at the conditional probability of error given a particular state sequence, Sn. And then we look at the average probability of error according to some joint state distribution. And now to define the uh, capacity region, we have we look at an epsilon code. And for an epsilon code, the average probability of error is bounded by epsilon for every joint state distribution. Okay, this is uh, important to know, including a, a zero one state distribution. So this means that. Uh, this conditional probability of error is also bounded by epsilon for every state sequence. Okay, and then as, as usual, an achievable rate pair, a, a rate pair because achievable if for every epsilon in sufficiently large n there exists such an epsilon code, and the capacity region is the closure of the set of achievable rate pairs. Sorry, for every Q, isn't this equivalent to saying the probability? Yes, that's true. Yeah. I, I present it this way because I want to, to, to note that the jammer is entitled to randomize the state okay. sequence, but, but it, it is equivalent, like you said. Yeah. Okay, so now we look also at random codes. A random code is a code drawn at random from a given collection of codes. Okay, here we denote it by 
uh, C gamma, there is a collection of codes according to some distribution, mu of gamma. When there is shared randomness, that means that the encoder and both decoders know which code was selected at random. Okay, so here we, we have the uh, average probability of error, which is also average over the code collection. And then we have a similar definition for epsilon random code and for the random code capacity region for rate pairs that are, ach that are achievable with random code. Okay, so uh, we denote the random code capacity region with this superscript star. Okay. star. Uh, so everyone knows generalization of the random code? Except for the jammer. Mm -hmm. Okay, the encoder and both decoders know the the realization, but the jammer doesn't. And the selection of the state. By jammer, you mean the selection of the state? Yes. yes. Not. Yeah, it cannot depend on, on this gamma. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah. Now, we are also interested in superposition coding with Shannon strategy. Okay, here we define a Shannon strategy code as a code that consists of these two strategy sequences, U01. Uh, U0n, sorry, that depends only on the common message. U1n depends on both the common and private messages. And uh, there's this encoding function psi that depends on U0, U1, and S, and two de decoding functions. So this is a special case of a code with causal side information. And the main distinction is that at each time instance i, the input symbol xi depends only on the current message. Okay, so the, and at each time I, the encoder ignores the previous mess, uh, previous state simply. Okay, and this distinction will be important for us in the SQL, that's why I give this definition here. It's not just a coding scheme in the uh, direct topology. Okay, so now we give a brief review of related work. First, we begin with the case when the- oh, Sorry, in the previous slide, okay, so is this, um also for primality that this doesn't depend on the whole cat uh, and only a sum? Yeah, you could lose a primality. It's a, it's a special case. It's okay. a special case that you want mm -hmm. to focus on in this work. Ah, uh, yes. yes. I, I will actually, I, I'll talk about both the general and the, the non, a code which is not a Shannon strategy code and I'll also talk about a Shannon strategy code. And this distinction will be important for us. Now we begin with the case when there is no side information. Okay, this is a review of related work. So for the random code capacity region, we have Jan's mm -hmm. inner bound, okay, given by this the, the region, this expression. This resembles the regular capacity region formula for the broadcast channel with degraded message set, except that we have this intersection over all state distributions. Okay, a single letter state distribution actually. Okay, so Jan showed that this region is achievable with random code. And Jan also notes in his paper that this region is not computable in exact because uh, the standard Terra Theodoric at least fails to show that the external variable U has a finite alphabet. Uh, this is because of this intersection of the state distribution. But it, it is still in, in a band because you can just choose uh, an alphabet for U and get some value. Okay, now Jan also showed an analogous property to Alswitz's dichotomy property. That is, he, sh he showed that the capacity region either equals the random code capacity region, C star, or else it has an empty interior. Okay, or equivalently, if the interior is not empty, the capacity region is the same as the random code capacity region. Uh, this is based on Alswitz's elimination techniques. Uh, basically, Alswitz, uh, in it shows that for a reliable random code, you need a code collection of polynomial psi. And then if the marginal capacities are positive, or the interior is not empty, then you can send the shared randomness, the index of the code, uh, using a very short sequence. Now, I also like to note that this condition that the interior is non empty is equivalent to that uh, the marginals, the marginal ABCs have positive capacity, 
So it would be useful to have a computable condition under which the capacity of an ABC is positive, and such a condition is given in terms of channel symmetrizability. We say that okay, a single user channel W of Y given X and S is said to be symmetrizable if there exists a conditional state distribution, J of S given X, that satisfies this symmetry relation. So here we, the channel is averaged according to this J. Here it is conditioned on X1 and here conditioned on X2. And on the right hand side, X1 and X2 switch places. Intuitively, a symmetrizable ABC is a bad channel. If we think, for example, of a symmetric, uh, a symmetric channel, say y equals x plus s, or uh, y then equals x and plus s n, right? So the channel can confuse the decoder by simply choosing the state sequence to be some code word. Okay, so because the channel can choose the state sequence however it wants. Okay, and indeed, Erickson and Shizar and Ariane showed that the capacity of an ABC is positive if and only if the ABC is non symmetric okay? And then Hoff and Boas pointed out that it follows that the interior of the capacity region is non empty if and only if both marginals have, are non symmetrical okay? And under this condition, Jan's inner bound can be applied to the deterministic of capacity region as well. Now we go back to our problem of the Abitali variant broadcast channel uh, for the case when there is causal side information at the encoder. We give our main results. So we begin with the compound broadcast channel. First, we have a state sequence that is memoryless with a distribution that belongs to this set Q. Okay, so we have this inner and outer bound. Here we have the union over the distribution of a pair of I call these strategy variables, u0 and u1, and set of all functions psi of this form, where the input s is psi of u0, u1, and s. Okay, this, is, this is called superposition uh, with Shannon strategies. Okay, and then we have this intersection over the possible state distribution. Now, the outer bound has the same form, the same expression, except that the intersection and the union switch places. That's the only difference. Uh, by the same considerations as with Young's inner bound, this inner bound is not computable in this set uh, as well. On the other hand, the outer bound is computable. Okay, we can look at the outer bound as an intersection of capacity region. For a given Q of S, this union is the capacity region for a broadcast channel with this particular state distribution Q of S. Question. Before you said that the inner bound, you can get a bound, a meaningful bound, even if you just take an intersection over some finite cardinality for Q? Yeah, so this is true here. So that's why I'm saying it's not computable in its Z. Okay. Okay. But, but, how, um, but if you take only some finite intersection, how is that a useful region? I mean, it's, it's obviously it's a bigger region than the inner bound, right? So you wait, don't know if it's- Wait, wait, you're talking about this yes. one? This is the inner bound. This region is an inner bound. Okay, the region is, but if I take a finite intersection, okay. it's no longer an inner bound. No, it's, it's- uh, I think the problem is with the cardinalities of the use. No, but it is still a meaningful inner bound if you just choose the, uh, the cardinality, whatever you want. But it's- But how does it remain an inner bound? Now it's a bigger it, region. Right? It, it, it's it's a smaller region, so it's it's less good as an inner bound. It's more it's loose. The cardinality of the use. It's oh, not the best. Well, right, right. Sorry, it's an it's intersection over a. S a so the overall, union this, yes, Here yes. we have a union. Okay, okay. So we okay. don't. So overall, it, it it becomes a smaller region. Exactly. Yes, yes. Okay. So we don't. You may not right. have the tightest right. inner bound that you can get from this, but you have some inner bound. Uh, and by the way, Young did not provide an outer bound for the case when there is no side information, but uh, an outer bound can be obtained for uh, his setting as well using the same approach. So by the way, if, if, if you identify situations where you can switch, 
the yeah. intersection in union, then, then you've got the well, region. Yes, thing. we're going to talk about this. But Uh, okay, so now the following lemma says that R out of BQ is not just an outer bound, actually. It equals the capacitor region if the interior is non-empty. And we show this by having the decoder compute the type of a subsequence of states, a short uh, sequence of states. And this works because for the compound channel, the state sequence is memoryless. So computing the type gives a good estimation of uh, the state distribution. However, this means that such coding scheme is not a Shannon strategy code. If you compute the type, then you have dependence on previous states. And we said that for a Shannon strategy code, the input symbol at time i depends only on the current state. And we also know that this would not work for the arbitrarily varying broadcast channel because uh, for the arbitrarily varying broadcast channel, the jammer can choose a state sequence such that the, this type will have will be completely different from the type of the entire state sequence. Okay, so this would such a scheme would not work for the orbital Levine broadcast channel. So to overcome this difficulty that we have here, because we want to use this result to analyze the orbital Levine broadcast channel, so to overcome this result, we have the second oh, sorry, we have the second part of the lemma that states that the inner bounds can be achieved using a Shannon strategy code. So we achieve the inner bounds without type estimation using a Shannon strategy code. And this criterion will be important for the analysis of the arbitrarily varying broadcast channel where we are going to use this part of the lemma. Okay. Uh, now we've also said that the broadcast channel with random parameters is a special case of uh, the compound broadcast channel. So here we get this result for free. We have that the capacitor region of the random parameter broadcast channel is given by this formula, which is which generalizes the previous result in the Litmus by Steinberg, where he assumed that the broadcast channel is degraded. Here we have a general broadcast channel with degraded message space. Okay, so now we move to the arbitrarily varying broadcast channel. Uh, so we have this inner and outer bounds, which are given by the same formula that we had before for the compound broadcast channel, except that this in, we have an intersection over all state distribution, not limited to a set. And now we are also interested in the conditions that you've mentioned earlier. So we're interested in the conditions under which these bounds coincide. And like you said, if we know when the intersection and the union commute, if they switch places, then we know that the bounds coincide. Then we can determine the random post-capacitor region. Okay, so now we note that for the single user case, okay, say that the common rate is zero, then the bounds, those regions reduce to this interval, this max mean bounded interval and mean max bounded interval. And then by the minimum theorem, they coincide, okay, because the mutual information has this convex concave uh, property. So now we are interested in generalizing this minimux property. So we would like to give a condition, a sufficient condition for such a minimux property for the two user case. To this end, we have the following definition. We say that a function psi and the set of strategy distribution d star achieve the regions if the union that we had earlier, we had this union, can be constrained to this set D star and this particular function Psi. Okay, earlier we had a union over all the space of distribution. If we can limit it to D star and this function, then we say that they achieve the regions. This may seem strange because if D star achieves the regions, then every set that contains D star also achieves the regions, but the following condition will not necessarily be satisfied for uh, the including set. So now we define this sufficient condition, T, as follows. For some function psi and set D star that achieve the regions, there exists a state distribution Q star that minimizes these mutual informations simultaneously for all 
uh, strategy distribution in this star in the achieving set, and we will shortly uh, discuss the intuitive meaning of this um, condition. And now, uh, the following theorem states that the random code capacitor region is bounded by uh, these regions, R in star and R of star, and if the condition T holds, then we have that the union and the intersection can be interchanged. So the bound, the inner and outer bound coincide, and under this condition, we have the random code capacitor region. Okay. Now we recall that uh, the region looks look like this, and we observe that interchanging the union and the intersection is analogous to interchanging the minimum and the maximum in the single user case. So Again, we are interested in the minimax property. Unfortunately, there is no minimax theorem uh, for rate region. Okay, this, we will see that this does not actually hold, always hold. Um, but our condition T is a sufficient condition for this generalized minimax property. And the intuitive meaning behind this condition is that the jammer has a strategy, Q star, which is the worst for both users simultaneously, for both the common and private message transmission, so the jammer doesn't have a trade-off. It can harm both uh, optimally. Now in the achievability proof, we modify Auschwitz robustification technique. Essentially, the robustification technique takes a reliable code for uh, the compound channel and uses it to construct a random code by applying random permutations to the covert symbol. Now, with cause assigned permission, the encoder cannot apply permutations to the symbols because the encoder doesn't know the states in future time instances. Future indices. So, to resolve this difficulty, we use a Shannon strategy code for the compound broadcast channel, and then we apply the permutations to the strategy sequences, which do not depend on the state system. So, this is the idea. Now we also show an analogous property. Yeah, didn't, didn't you say before that you're, you, um, you're looking at uh, some little low of n symbols from the past? Yeah. Okay, that, that was uh, in, the second, in, the, in the first part of the lemma where we've shown that for the, just a second. In the yeah. first part of the lemma, we've shown that you can achieve the region R out of BQ using this uh, computation of the type. But now oh, for the yeah, arbitrary... You're this is for the converse? No, 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 this is for the direct path. Okay. For the compound broadcast channel. But then we, like, we so can't use, we don't use... Out means... Uh, just, we don't use this in the analysis of the arbitrary line broadcast channel. What we use is the second part of the lemma that state that the inner bound can be achieved without type estimation. Mm. That's why we don't have a direct path for R out in the case of the arbitrarily barring broadcast channel. Mm. Okay, so we, for the compound broadcast channel, we have better results. We, we, we have the capacity, right? We have the capacity region for the compound broadcast channel. And for the arbitrarily barring broadcast channel, we only have bound. And the condition under which uh, the, capacity, the random code capacity region is determined. So are, are there cases where you can't achieve capacity with Shannon strategy per se, but if you look at some say little low of n symbols from the past and maybe take the empirical distribution of those? If you take the empirical distribution, it's no longer a Shannon strategy code. Right. But and, and also this this coding scheme cannot work for the arbitrarily running broadcast channel because the jammer can choose the state sequence of this short, even though it's short, the jammer can choose it to have a type which is has nothing to do with the type of the entire state sequence. Okay, so and we've shown that the capacitor region either equals the random code capacitor region or else it has an empty interior. Therefore, we have that if the interior is non empty, then R in star is, in, is an inner bound on the deterministic code capacitor region as well. 
our old star is always in outer bound because the random pool capacitor region must always be in outer bound. What you see is the deterministic pool capacitor region. So now we're interested in computable condition under which the interior is non-empty. We would like to give a generalized symmetrizability condition. So to this end, we have the following definition. We define the channel from the strategy variable u0, u1 to the output y1, which is the margin of w of y1, condition on the input psi of u0, u1 in the s. And similarly, we define this channel V psi prime from U0 to the output Y2. Okay, so these channels depend on the choice of the function psi and psi prime. And then it can be deduced from the results by Chizar and Ariane and Chizar and Kerner that if these channels are non symmetrizable for some choice of function psi and psi prime, then the interior is non empty. Okay, so this is a generalized symmetrizability condition for having the interior. Uh, for having a non-empty interior, and then uh, together with the condition, if the condition T holds and this non-symmetrizability condition holds as well, then we have the capacity region. And now we are going to give an example and show that there are cases where this condition holds, so we can determine the capacity region uh, under some for some cases. So we consider the binary symmetric broadcast channel. Here the, out, the output y1 is this bsc, x sor vs, y2 is x sor ns. All variables here are binary, 0, 1. So zs is Bernoulli theta 0 or theta 1, depending on the state. And then s is Bernoulli epsilon 0 or epsilon 1, depending on the state. Where the parameters satisfy this inequality, which intuitively means that ns is worse than zs. So now we, we can ask whether this channel is degraded. It, it looks degraded because ns is worse, and given for a given state, it is a stochastically degraded channel. Okay, the, uh, the output y2 has a marginal which is the same as y1 xor this noise, independent noise. However, using the common definitions, this is not a degraded channel if we do not condition on the state. Because if we do not condition on the state, there is dependence between these two, because y1 also depends on the state. So it's not a degraded channel. We cannot use there is the previous results in the literature, so we apply our results. Okay, we begin with the broadcast channel with random parameters, where the state sequence is memoryless Bernoulli Q, for a given Q. So now with outside information, we have covers classical result. Here we have uh, these parameters, epsilon q bar and theta q bar, which are simply the average parameters. And now with causal cell information, we show that this is the capacity region, similar expression, except that the parameters are replaced by epsilon q hat and theta q hat, which are in general smaller. Now we move to the arbitrarily variant broadcast channel, where the state sequence has an un arbitrary distribution. Then without some information, the capacity region is just zero, zero. The rates are zero, zero, because the marginals are symmetrical. They're actually symmetric. <coughs> okay, and now with causal cell information, we consider two cases. First, we consider the case where the parameters satisfy this inequality, which means that the state S equals one is noisier for both users. So then we show that the condition T holds and the capacity region is given by this expression, and this is not that surprising because this is this corresponds to the state S equals one, which is the worst. Here we have this graphical interpretation. Uh, in the following figure, the colored lines are uh, denote the, the the area below the colored lines is the capacity region C of BQ, where the state is memoryless Bernoulli Q. And then we, we can see that these regions are well ordered. That is, they are included within each other. So their intersection is C of BQ with Q equals one, which is also the capacity region of the arbitrarily variant broadcast channel. Now we have the second so case. Is this with causal state? Uh, yes, with causal state information, yes. Now the second case where S equals 9 is noisier for users 
one, but that's equal to zero if you know it's there for user two. Then we have this inner and outer bounds. So again, the, the area below the colored lines is the capacitor region C of BQ with a state which is Bernoulli Q. And now the intersection reduces to C of BQ equals zero, intersected with C of BQ equals one, which gives the area below this black line. This, this is the outer bound. And the inner bound is the area below the blue line. So now we can see that there is a gap between the bounds, which means that the minimax theorem cannot always be generalized to rate regions. Okay, skip the, the conclusion. Uh, due to the short time, I will skip the analysis of this example unless you have some objections. Um, okay, I'll move to the second part of the talk. Here we introduce a new model, the Abitali Barn Relay Channel, which combines this, these models, the Relay Channel and the ABC. It is simply a relay channel attacked by a jam. Okay, so. Uh, the relay channel was introduced by Van der Mullen and it is considered to be a fundamental building block for communication networks. It is a very simple network here. The sender wishes to send information to destination receiver with the help of uh, the relay. The relay receives a noisy version of the sender's transmission and sends its own transmission to the destination receiver in a strictly formal manner. So, the capacity, the capacity of the relay channel is unknown in general. However, Cover and Eldamal established these lower and upper bounds. Uh, first, the cut set upper bound is based on the approach of decomposing the relay channel into a broadcast channel component and a multiple axis channel component. And then there's the decode forward lower bound, or partial decode forward lower bound, where, uh, which is based on a block Markov coding scheme where the relay, relay decodes the message or part of it and sends its estimation to the receiver. And this is uh, optimal for the degraded relay channel. Now the capacity is known for several special cases, including uh, the degraded and reversely degraded relay channels, the case of orthogonal sender components and uh, some modulus sum relay channels. So here are our main contributions we introduced this new model, the Abitale Bound Relay Channel. We develop low and upper bounds on the random code capacity, and we also determine the random code capacity for the special cases of degraded and inversely degraded relay channels, and the case of orthogonal sender components. We also talk about the uh, Gaussian relay channel. As for the deterministic code capacity, we give symmetrizability conditions, conditions under which the capacity is the same as the random code capacity, conditions on which the capacity is zero. We also answer the following question, is the capacity necessarily zero when both marginals from the sender to the receiver and from the sender to the relay are symmetrizable? Now, again, our proof technique is based on Auschwitz robustification technique. Again, the robustification technique cannot be applied as is to the relay channel and we have to modify it, but we modify it in a different manner than so here for the relay channel, the encoder sends xi at time i, and the relay sends x1i using the sequence of past received symbols. That's for the primitive, uh, for the sorry, not the not primitive relay channel, the classical relay channel. Um, and then the decoder receives yi. Again, the state sequence has an unknown distribution. We denote the channel by L. And here we define the block compound relay channel where the transmitter sends B blocks. And in each block, the jammer can choose a different memoryless state distribution. Okay, in block B, the jammer can use QB. Okay. Um, so we denote this by L, Q cross B. And since in this model, the encoder knows the, this jamming strategy, this is really a toy model but it is still useful for the analysis of the abitali varn relay channel. Okay, it facilitates the combination of the ABC techniques and uh, block Markov coding schemes. Okay, so here there's no side information, the encoder only uses the uh, message M, and in each time I, the relay has this strictly causal mapping using the sequence of past received symbols. 
and we have this uh, decoding function and the random code is defined as we have before here there's shared randomness between the encoder the relay encoder and the decoder so now we give our results on this block compound relay channel we have the cut set upper bound and the decode forward lower the partial decode forward lower bound you can see here no one sees the states no one sees the states that's cool. So here we have the infimum over the state distribution, and then the maximum over the input and relay distribution. On the other hand, for the lower bound, first the maximum, and then multiple mutual information terms, each has its own infimum, so it's a bit more complicated than the usual decode forward lower bound. So again, the ordering of the minimum and the maximum uh, will be important. So we have these bounds, and it, again, it's important that the lower bound can be achieved with a, comp uh, with a specific structure of the code. Okay, the structure here is can block, you what block compound relay channel means? A uh, block, com block compound relay channel means that in each block, the, the encoder transmits in blocks. In, um, so B can go to infinity or? Yes. B goes to infinity, right? Yes. And in each block, the jammer can choose a different state distribution. A memoryless state because for the compound channel that we had earlier the jammer choose one state distribution a memoryless state distribution mm -hmm. for the entire block okay. here in each block a different one and how many blocks a capital B, B which can go to infinity okay. and this help, helps us use the block mark of coding scheme uh, and apply the robustification technique Not really a channel model. This is more like just to think about your achievability and intermediate steps for what you do. Um, the channel model is an auxiliary model. That's it. Yeah, but uh, it, it is a toy model. I can't think of an interesting uh, reason by itself to, to look at this model, but yes, it is would be nice if it was a Charlie Ryan relay channel. Um, so here the, uh, okay, maybe I'll move, I'll move to the Avitali bound relay channel. So now we have the same bounds, only that we have a minimum of all state distribution. We have these bounds on the random code capacity. And again, we modify the robustification technique. Here, the robustification technique cannot be applied as is because the relay cannot apply permutations to its transmission because it's a strictly causal mapping. Okay, so. Uh, however, if we use this block mark of coding for the block compound relay channel, then we can apply permutations because the relay only uses uh, the relay uses symbols received in the previous block. Okay, and now we can determine the random code capacity for these special cases. If the relay channel is reversely degraded and has this form then the random code capacity is given by this direct transmission rate. If it is degraded and has this form, then it is given uh, by a full decode forward coding scheme where they relay decodes the entire message. And as I said, we had different ordering of the minimum and the maximum and, uh, for our lower and upper bound. So again, we need to use the minimax theorem. So on a technical note, I say that um, this functional, the minimum between these mutual informations is actually, it's not necessarily convex in the state distribution. It could look like this. This is not a convex function. However, since this marginal, we assume that it does not depend on the state, only this marginal depends on the state, then we have, then we have a quasi-convex function of the state distribution. And uh, luckily, the minimum theorem still applies for quasi-convex functions. Okay, now we move to um, now we move to the deterministic code capacity. We give some phrasability conditions in terms of these marginals. We consider the ABC from the sender to the receiver and from the sender to the relay for a, good, a given relay transmission X1. So the following lemma states that if these marginals are non-symmetrizable for some relay transmission, 
then the capacity is the same as the random pool capacity. Uh, and this actually follows from the following lemma. The following lemma states that uh, under this non semi condition, the capacity is positive. So now we can ask whether this is uh, a necessary condition for positive capacity as well. Or in other words, <coughs> if these marginals are symmetrical for every relay transmission, does that mean that the capacity is zero? And the answer is no, we show this using a very simple example. Here the relay can inform the decoder of the state sequence. So even though both of these marginals are uh, symmetric for every relay transmission, uh, the capacity is still positive. For binary variables, the capacity is going to be one. Okay, so now we would like to give a stronger condition which will be a necessary condition for positive capacity. So it's like you can compute both the relay and uh, exactly. source at the same time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here we, we define the strongest symmetrizability condition for the, for the relay channel and not just the marginal. And then under this stronger condition, the capacity is zero. So non symmetrizability in this stronger sense is a necessary condition for positive capacity. Now uh, we consider the case of orthogonal sender components where the input consists of a pair x prime and x double prime. Uh, the marginal to the relay depends only on x double prime and the marginal to the receiver given x1 depends only on x prime. So we determine the random code capacity uh, under this channel form and we also give symmetrizability conditions for this channel. Now we would like to look at the special case of the Gaussian relay channel with sender frequency division. Sender frequency division is actually the same as orthogonal sender component, it's a different name. Uh, so here the relay receives x double prime plus Gaussian noise z, this is noise, and the relay receives x prime plus the relay transmission plus the state, and we have, here we need to have power limitation. Okay, the encoder has the input constraint omega, the relay transmission has the input cons has the constraint omega one, and the jammer has the state constraint lambda. This. So I won't go too much into the formula. So no added Gaussian noise for, for the receiver? Ah, for the receiver, no. Uh, if we add this noise, then it would make the analysis more complicated. We don't currently have a solution for that. But we expect the same behavior. Okay. Um, maybe later yeah, uh, we'll yeah. talk about why we expect the same behavior. Because yeah. I just want to say a few, a few more things. So, um, here, we determine the random code capacity using the results that we've seen uh, a couple of slides back. And we give these bounds on the deterministic code capacity using an independent analysis, uh, which is based on methods by Chizar and Arian in the 1991 paper on the Gaussian ABC. They, have, they had a paper specifically on the Gaussian ABC. So we use these methods and we modify them uh, to the block Markov coding scheme. So to illustrate our results, we have this figure uh, of the capacity as a function of the input constraint for the case where the, the relay has the same constraint as the encoder. The dashed line here is the random code capacity and the solid lines are the lower and upper bound. So this red line is the upper bound. We can see that for low values of the input constraint, the upper bound is zero. So the capacity is zero, while the random code capacity is positive. Okay, well, um, I'll go back to that later, so I hope you keep that in mind. And now for these intermediate values of the uh, input constraint, we also look at this dotted line, which is the direct transmission uh, lower bound. So these values, direct transmission is actually better than our partial decode forward lower bound. <coughs> However, for high values of the input constraint, our bounds coincide. So we have the capacity for this case. And yeah. your bounds, uh, your general bounds don't apply to this setting? They do. 
but actually here we okay. have bans on the deterministic code capacity without condition. So here we have more results actually. We have stronger results than we have for the general case. For the random code capacity we use the previous results and we determine the capacity. The but, random but these bounds are necessarily better than yours? Uh, well, we don't have conditions here. Earlier we had symmetrizability conditions, and now we don't need them. Okay. Um, now I'd like to also talk, this is the last slide, I'd like to talk also about the primitive relay channel, which received a lot of attention in recent years, and there are some uh, people in the audience that uh, have the important work on the primitive relay channel. The primitive relay channel is a variation of the relay channel where there is a noiseless link between uh, the relay, between the relay and the decoder. So now the decoder receives this output Y and an index received from the relay. Okay, here there's, there's the limited capacity C1. Okay. Now one of the advantages is that the, the analysis for the primitive relay channel is simpler. We, uh, binning replaces block Markov coding. And um, in, his, in his 2007 paper, Kim, uh, where Kim introduces the primitive relay channel, he notes that the primitive relay channel has uh, the same challenges and the, the same features as the non-primitive relay channel, so it, it is good for testing new coding techniques. Okay, it has the same behavior. Now we are going to blame it for the arbitrarily bound channel. This is not true. The primitive relay channel has a different behavior. So we show that both the capacity and the random code capacity for this case are given by this expression. For the random code capacity, this is not that surprising, and it has the same form as we had earlier. So for the random code capacity, we have the same behavior. However, recall that for the non-primitive relay channel, we've seen that for low values of the input constraint, the capacity is zero while the random code capacity is positive. Here, on the other hand, regardless of the input constraint value, the capacity is the same as the random code capacity. We can show this using the elimination technique despite the state constraint. Uh, so we have a different behavior. Symmetrizability behavior. Okay, the, when what I said earlier that if we have a symmetric channel like this, then the jammer can confuse the decoder by choosing the state sequence to be uh, some code rate. In our case, the jammer, um, sorry, the jammer we we show that the jammer confuses the decoder by choosing a state sequence that looks like this that x prime plus x1. But now, we have a noiseless link. And this, this does not depend on the state now. So now we can send the shared randomness, the index of the code, through this channel. Okay. Usually when there is a state constraint, you cannot use the elimination technique, because if, we, if you send over if you send a short sequence, then the jammer does not really have a state constraint over this short period of time. So that's why we have this difference. Okay. How does this compare to the state just being Gaussian with uh, variance gamma? Oh, it doesn't really make sense. No, it doesn't make sense because here no one sees the states. No, no one sees this. Okay, good. Do you need the? Do you need things to be exactly symmetrizable or close enough? No. Okay. So symmetry. This is called actually symmetry. This is not symmetry. Yeah. And symmetry. It's important to state. Yeah. Symmetry. Symmetry is a more general notion. Yeah, that's true. 
and uh, if I'll uh, just write it right. So tradability means that the gem has it's and reversible. Markovian and symmetry means reversible in time. Yeah, um, yeah, but symmetrizability means that the gem has a distribution or a channel. So the gem has a channel that causes the that the state looks like the channel input. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I orthogonally look. That, that the latter then is what you really need, not the symmetrizability per se. That's, that's the definition, the definition. That's what he means when he says when he says symmetrizable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's close enough. Uh, okay, so here is X prime. So the gem has this distribution, conditional distribution, that causes that uh, the state that uh, that causes this confusion between x prime and x. Okay, you can think of this x prime as an imposter sent by the gem, but but here it's, it's true that the, the the state doesn't it can have a different alphabet compared to the input. It doesn't need to be the same. So this is this is a more general notion than symmetry of the input. Yeah. So in the in the setting of uh, the first problem, what's not about the non-covalent case? The, you mean the board question? Yes. Ah. Uh, okay. And so how does it relate to yeah. what you've done? <laughs> then, for the, for non-causal side information, in some sense things are easier uh, in the sense that you can use the robustification technique as is. The encoder can apply permutations to the coded symbols because they know the entire state sequence in advance. So the dependence on the state sequence does not bother you when you apply the, the robustification technique. Here with causal side information, you have the causality requirement imposed this difficulty. So, um, Weinstein and Steinberg, they determined both the capacitor region and the random code capacitor region uh, for the <coughs> Abitali variant degraded broadcast channel for the case when there is non causal side information at both the encoder and the stronger decoder itself. Ah, yeah, we have results for the for causal side information and the relay case. Okay. Uh, you assume both the relay and the source, or just one? Yes. yes. This is not all of our results for now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you.